Hey you, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new low profile GPU that recently hit the market that is coming in at a lower cost than the last one we saw, which was the RTX 4060 low profile. And keep in mind with that one, it also required an 8 pin PCIe power connector. But with this new model, we don't need any extra power. It's going to pull everything from the PCIe slot. And what you're seeing on the table right now are low profile cards that we've gone through. Now, I personally love these for small form factor builds. We've got the RX 6400. Intel released their low profile A380. We've also got the RTX A2000, which can be had used for around $230. But one card that I personally have used a lot in low profile builds, and I know a lot of people out there have also, is the GTX 1650. But we've got a new one on the market because uh, recently several manufacturers have released the low profile RTX 3050. And I know what people are thinking, it's just the 3050 and of course it is. But we're working with a low profile version here and we don't need any extra power. I do think that this would work out really well for a lot of people out there trying to build a 1080p small form factor gaming PC. Because if you're into these smaller cards, you know, one of the go-tos right now has been the A2000. Sometimes you can get a pretty good deal on it used on Amazon or eBay. And of course, we've also got the low profile RTX 4060, but that definitely costs a grip. This new low profile RTX 3050 is coming in at 189. And yeah, it does come with that low profile bracket. So this isn't going to be the end all be all when it comes to low profile cards, but this will definitely get you by with 1080p gaming in a super small form factor. And just comparing it to some others like the A2000 and the GTX 1650 definitely looks like if you've got one of these cards in your system, you could just throw this one right in there, no problem at all. Obviously, it is a low profile card, but it does take two slots. So it's a dual slot, low profile GPU. A few manufacturers do have these low profile 3050s going on the market really soon, but the one I could get my hands on was the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3050 overclock low profile 6 gig. With this, we get a 1,477 megahertz core clock, 2,304 CUDA cores, six gigabytes of GDDR6, but this is running at a 96-bit bus. We can also do four displays out at the same time. We've got two display ports. These are 1.4A and two full-size HDMI ports. These are 2.1. It's 181 millimeters long, 69 millimeters wide, and 36 millimeters high. They do recommend at least the 300 watt power supply, but the card itself doesn't need any extra power except for what the PCIe slot can provide. I completely understand that not a lot of people are going to pair up the low profile 3050 with an i7 14700K, but I wanted to alleviate any other kind of bottlenecks here. So as you can see, we've got six gigs of VRAM with this. And checking out GPU-Z here, We've got that boost up to 1477. Now I have seen it go a bit higher and this is kind of the case with these low profile cards. Really depends on what kind of power it's pulling. And that's the next thing I wanted to take a look at. So what I'm gonna do here is run a real GPU stress test on this. You can see GPU clock isn't jumping. We're not gaming right now, but we've got a max power draw of 70 watts. We can't up this because we don't have any external power from here. And uh, I'm sure like a BIOS mod down the road would allow you to get a little more out of it. But you're kind of stuck here at 70 watts. But luckily you can overclock this if you wanted to. But for this, we're gonna stick with those stock clocks. Now, as you can see from Afterburner, we do have some overclocking that can get done here. No power limit adjustment. So we're just gonna be sticking at 100%. And the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this system. First one here is 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 48,797. Graphic score, 62,275. So we are coming ahead of that GTX 1650. And of course, I knew we would. We've got a newer card here. Plus, one thing to keep in mind is this does support DLSS. And with these lower end cards, it can really help out. With Firestrike, we scored an 11,999. And finally, we've got Time Spy. Total score, 5,639. Graphic score, 4,991. And I did want to compare this graphic score here with 3D Mark Time Spy against some other low profile cards that we've seen. So at the very top, we've got that GTX 1650 low profile. Total graphic score, 3,454. RX 6400 low profile, not coming too far ahead, but it is beating it out by just a bit. Right in the middle there, we've got the RTX 3050 low profile. But as you can see, the RTX A2000, which again, you can pick up used on Amazon for about 230, 
is beating out this low profile 3050. And of course the RTX 4060 low profile is coming ahead of all of them, but remember you need an extra 8 pin connector for that card. Just judging by the synthetics here, the RTX 3050 is a nice upgrade over that GTX 1650, but uh, these are all synthetic benchmarks and now it's time to check out some real world gaming. I've actually got 10 games to test here, and first up we've got Forza Motorsports 1080p Medium DLSS is set to balance. I'm going to tell you right now with some of the newer AAA stuff, you know, trying to go up to those high or ultra settings, DLSS is going to be your best friend on this low profile 3050. God of War 1080p high settings DLSS also at balance just like Forza Motorsports. We're getting an average of around 71 FPS here, not bad at all, and you know, going from just say native 1080p to DLSS enabled at balance, it's really hard for me to tell the difference between the two. I know some people out there do have a more keen eye, but yeah, I mean, if you're struggling with something on this little card, you could always enable it, and it really ups that FPS. Borderlands 3 1080p Ultra, we are at 100% resolution scale, we didn't need any kind of scaling here. We got an average of 108 FPS, and I knew that this was going to perform quite well on this little setup at 1080p. Power World is one I wanted to test here, and with this we did have to enable a little bit of DLSS at high, so 1080p, high, DLSS at balance. At medium, you really don't need it, but this does kind of bring it on up. Over 68 on average without, up to 76 on average with. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, just using the built-in benchmark here, 1080p. Recommended settings, kind of just pre-configures everything for us. And DLSS is also set to balance. Every once in a while, I did see it get real close to around 61 FPS, but overall, we had a pretty steady frame rate here. And by the end of this run, we had an average of 74 FPS. I also ran the built-in benchmark for Horizon Zero Dawn, and I knew this game was going to perform really well on the 3050, so we didn't need any kind of DLSS, and we're at 1080p, ultra settings, by the end, 74 FPS on average. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, ultra settings, we average 76 FPS, and this is without DLSS. Adding a little will definitely take you up, and you could do a constant 120 with this game with the correct settings. Mortal Kombat 1, 1080p, high settings, didn't need any kind of scaling. I thought we would when I first started this up, really wasn't sure how it was going to perform on this little card, but it's doing a decent job at 1080. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, high settings, DLSS is set to balance. So uh, going up to Ultra, we'll take you on down. You will need to enable a little more DLSS, taking it to performance. We'll net you an average of around 74 FPS. But with it set up like this, I do think it looks really good at 1080p, high, not bad. And uh, I kind of expected a little less out of this card. Because after all, we're not working with a super powerful GPU. I mean, this is pulling all of its wattage from that PCIe slot. And of course, we've seen some more powerful cards on the market, like that A2000 and the RTX 4060. But in terms of low profile cards that we can put in these small form factor builds, I think this would be a nice little upgrade over the GTX 1650. I think it would have been really nice if they went with 8 gigs of RAM instead of 6. But I mean, this is what we have on the market right now. Retail on this is 189 for this dual slot low profile RTX 3050. Again, I've got the gigabyte version, but there are other manufacturers out there. I believe MSI also has one hitting the market soon, if not already on the market. But I'll tell you, you know, if you can pick up that A2000 for 199, sometimes you will see it on eBay and Amazon for that price point, then I think that would definitely be the card to get over this one here. But if you're looking for something brand new that's really not going to break the bank for your small form factor build, then I do think that the new low profile RTX 3050 would be a great choice for you. And even if I was looking at these cards online, seeing that I could pick up the GTX 1650 for $30 less, I would go with this because we do have access to DLSS. And with newer games coming out, that's really going to help out. 
And in the long run, you can get more use out of this low profile RTX 3050 than we can out of the GTX 1650 right now in 2024. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I will have a small form factor build coming up using this card. We're going to go with something a bit lower end, try to keep everything nice and cheap. If you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. And if you're interested in learning a little more, maybe pick one of these cards up. Links will be in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.